I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a very important application of infinite geometric series. The question is, when between 3 and 4 o'clock are the hands of a clock together? Let's try to understand this situation. Let's say we have a clock here. We are considering the time when it is 3. So, so that means, let's say this is 12. 6, 3, and 9. So when I say it is 3 o'clock, it really means that the hour arm is at 3 and the minutes arm is at 12. So that is 3 o'clock. Now in one hour, the hour arm is going to move to, let's say this is 4 for us. So from 3, it is going to move to 4, and the big needle will go full round. Correct? So basically, what we notice here is that in one hour, so in an hour, the minute arm will be 60 minute units right so there are five in each one two three four and five but the hour arm will be going through five minute units so when i say minute units these dots which you see right so there are 60 minutes in an hour so there will be 60 dots in minute units right so that really means that one minute, so this needle, when it goes through one minute, the hour arm goes through one over 12. How do I get one over 12? I get one over 12 as five over 60, right? So five over 60, when you divide, you get one over 12 minute, right? So if minutes arm goes for m minutes, in that case, this time will be m over 12. Does it make sense? So this is the basic concept. So what we are trying to say here is that, let's look into first 15 minutes. So it takes 15 minutes for the minute arm to reach here, right? So this is 15 minutes. So first, as the minute arm moves 15 minutes, the hour arm moves 15 over 12 minutes. Do you see that? I should say minute units. Because that also moves forward. So when the bigger needle comes to this position, at that time, the smaller needle, the hour arm, will move further. I mean, it's much closer, but let's say move further. So they are not overlapping, right? They are not overlapping. So that is why, now again, this minute arm will have to move that much further, right? So it moves further by 15 over 12 minutes and the hour arm moves again 1 12th of 15 over 12. So that is how much the hour arm will move. So likewise, it will now move that much distance and every time when the minute arm moves, the hour arm also moves, right? So ultimately, it has to cross somewhere, right? So what you notice here is that the time in minute arms will be 15 plus 15 over 12 plus again 1 over 12 you can say 15 over 12 square plus 15 over 12 cube and so on so it becomes a geometric series where a is 15 and r is 1 over 12 and it seems to be infinitely long correct so we could use the formula for 
the geometric series infinite, right? So that sum for infinite geometric series is equal to a over 1 minus r. Now in this case a is 15, so we get 15 over 1 minus r, which is 1 over 12. So that is how you could calculate this, correct? So we can simplify this and write this as 15 over 12 minus 1 over 12 or 15 times 12 over, I mean this is 1, 12 minus 1 is 11 and now let's calculate this answer. So it is 15 times 12 divided by 11 equals to 180 by 11. 180 by 11, right? So uh, in decimals, let's write it in decimals, equals to 16.36 rec ring. So that is equal to 16.36 rec ring or approximately 16.4, correct? So that is the time in minutes which will be lapsed when they overlap. Do you understand? So that is how we could actually solve this type of question. I hope that makes sense, right? We'll also show you another method of doing it with the help of your multiple choice questions. So let us see if it makes sense to you. I'm unlocking with you a test question on infinite geometric series. The question here is, when between 5 and 6 o'clock are the hands of a clock together? Four options are given to you. Now I'm going to use a different method here, uh, which is algebraic method instead of uh, infinite series to solve. Let's first try to understand the question itself. So, so let's say this is our clock, where 5 and 6 o'clock really means that so that is uh, 12 and this is 6. So we have 3 and 9. So somewhere here could be 5, that could be 4. So, so the question is, when between 5 and 6 o'clock are the two hands of the clock together? So if you visualize between 5 and 6, uh, what we are looking for is that the smaller needle is the hour needle, which is, let us say, something like this. And the, the minutes needle is over it. So that is the situation which we are looking for, correct? So we want to figure out what should be the time. Now the concept to solve this type of question is that uh, let's say this is at, we start at 5 o'clock. So initially at 5 o'clock, the position is kind of like this, that the hour needle is, is at 5 and the minutes needle is at 12, correct? So what you need to understand here is that as the hour needle moves, I mean, as the minutes needle moves, our needle also moves. So by the time the minutes are 25, that means this covers a distance up to here, the hour needle has moved further away, right? So they are not one over the other. So the idea is that uh, when minutes R moves, let's say, 60 steps. In that time, hours R moves how many steps? Five steps, right? So it will go from here to here, right? So one, two, three, four, and five moves five steps. Now to solve such questions, we have to use same unit. So, so what we are trying to say here is that in 60 steps, 60 minute, steps equals to five hour steps. 
Do you see that? So that is the kind of movement. So every minute, how many steps will the aura move? It will be 5 over 60, which is 1 twelfth. Do you see that? So, so every time this minute arm moves, by one step, the hour arm moves one twelfth of a step. Okay, so, so this is the concept. So let us say that it takes m minute. So that means m minutes of steps. So in that case, m should be equal to distance moved by the uh, by the clock will be how much for the minute steps in m minutes these steps will be how many first we'll take from 12 to 5 which is 25 steps plus how much did the hour arm move it moved m times 1 over 12 it moved m times 1 over 12 right so this is the distance which was moved by the hour arm right because it moves 1 twelfth of every minute so that forms an equation and solving this equation you can very easily get answer to such questions so let's cross multiply multiply everything by 12 so we get 12 m equals to 25 times 12 plus m and then we have 12 m minus m equals to let me write 25 times 12 and that is 11 m right equals to so 300 now from here we can calculate what m is right so 4 times 3 is 12 so 300 is correct so we have m equals to 300 over 11 so let's use the calculator to get this value or you could do long division if calculator is not allowed so that divided by 11 gives you uh, as equals to 27.27 recurring now this could be rounded to 27.3 so c is the right option do you understand so now once you know this formula which is the number of minutes will be equal to initial time difference which is 25 right from here to here plus the hour hand will move m times 1 over 12 so that becomes an equation to solve for all such questions so I hope this step is absolutely clear, right? Now, based on this, I have second question for you, which is right here. Now, I'd like you to solve this question. When between 1 and 2 o'clock are the hands of a clock directly opposite? Now, let's try to understand how to solve these questions. So, let's look into the clock first. We are saying when between 1 and 2. So, so that means this is the position 12. This is, let's say, 6, 9, 3, 1, and 2, right? So let's say th these are the positions, correct? So initially, let us assume that the time is 1 o'clock. So in that case, the minutes arm will be in this position and the hours arm will be at 1. Now as the time changes we look forward for a time when these needles are directly opposite one another. That is to say that somewhere in between 1 and 2 this is 1 this is 2 right somewhere in between 1 and 2 so so the the minute sound will be there and the hour sound will be somewhere here so we're looking for this position now if you look into it we know a few things that is the time taken for the minute sound will be 
one it has to cover these five minutes right from here to here so so the time taken let's say m be the time taken in minutes will be these five minutes plus uh, directly opposite will be how much so we do 30 minutes right directly opposite plus time moved by the hour so time moved by hour hour now how much is that time now this time moved by the hour arm is actually uh, can be calculated by thinking like this in 60 minutes let me show this calculation in 60 minutes the hour arm moves five five positions right in one minute it will go 5 over 60 which is 1 over 12 so in m minutes it will be m over 12 does make sense to you so this time moved by the hour arm is m over 12 now we'll use this position m over 12 for the duration which this moved so that'll be the extra right so we get our equation as m equals to 35 plus m over 12. now we can solve for m this is time in minutes right so we get 12 m equals to 35 times 12 plus m taking away we get 12 m minus m equals to 35 times 12 11 m is 35 times 12 and m should be equal to 35 times 12 divided by 11 correct so let's calculate this answer so we have 35 times 12 divided by 11 equals to 420 by 11 okay so in decimals it'd be 38.18 which could be approximated as 38.2 so b is the right option it does make sense to you b is the right option so i hope you understand the concept that the time taken will be in minutes by the minutes arm it has to move directly across means first in this case cover five minutes and then 30 35 and then extra which the hour arm moved which is m 12th correct so that is how you are going to solve all such questions i hope that makes sense feel free to write your comments and share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great thanks for watching and all the best